All right, guys, so today we've got an oil change on this 2004 uh, Toyota Camry. Uh, it is my car, and one of the things that I want to make sure we do, we don't talk much about, um, is making sure that we protect the customer's vehicle. Because whether you're working here in uh, an auto or you've got a, uh, a customer in a shop that you're working at, you want to make sure that you don't scratch the car. Um, anything like fingerprints, um, grease, uh, things left open, things not completely done, um, you know, especially scratches. As I lean over the car, I've got a belt, I've got a zipper, um, you know, maybe something in my pocket or a chain or something like that that I could possibly scratch the, uh, the paint with. Um, doesn't matter how old the car is, you know, this one's mine, so I, I mean, personally, I don't, you know, care if I get a small scratch or two, but that's if I do it. I certainly don't expect someone to do it if I go into a repair shop. Um, you know, I want them to treat my car, you know, with the respect that they would treat their mothers, you know, so not their own. <laughs> um, so just one thing I want to, you know, stress when you're working on it, when you're working on a customer's vehicle is to... Um, you know, make sure to treat it uh, with the utmost respect, uh, whether that's putting a floor mat on the floor when you, you know, when you walk into the car, using a clean set of gloves, you know, when you go over to the car, taking them off before you jump back in so you're not getting grease or oil on the, uh, you know, on the door handle. Uh, whatever you can do to give them, you know, A plus service, you know, so that they come, they, they go back in their car and they're, they've got no reason to think that you left the oil cap loose or you know you dripped oil all over the place or left the drain plug loose or something like that um, you know the better you take care of the small stuff the more that they'll trust you on the big stuff so as I get ready to do this I'm popping the cap for my own good this is personal preference but I also pull up the uh, the dipstick so when I go back down bring this bring this back down I know that something still needs to be done with the oil just a safety mechanism for when you're moving really fast. So on this oil change, we're just gonna be doing a, a basic oil change. Um, I've already done most of the checks, so we're not gonna go ahead and do the full courtesy checks, uh, but we will be checking the air pressure. Uh, I've already topped off my fluids up here, uh, so I don't need to do anything up there. And uh, just uh, basically oil change and, uh, and get it out the door. All right, guys, so when you do an oil change, you always want to uh, double check anything that's oil related uh, under the vehicle. So just look around for major leaks, uh, anything that you uh, think might be a concern to the customer or that you might be blamed for later, because <laughs> uh, you never know. Um, there is definitely a little bit of a leak right here. Um, looks like it may be coming from the front of the uh, oil pan. Maybe up in here, a little moist in there. Um, so if this was uh, not my car and a customer's car, uh, I just let them know to keep an eye on this. Doesn't look like it's creating too much of a drip at this point, but definitely seeping out. Um, but you always look to the belt side of the car to find the uh, oil drain plug. Uh, you can see we've got a, a drain pan right here as well with a plug uh, it's for the transmission and this is the side if you looked at the vehicle when you when uh, up top you would know that it had uh, the belts are on the front side this is actually even though it's the side of the car this is the front side of the engine because uh, it's mounted in here sideways and so uh, the oil pan is always the pan closest to the uh, the belts and the crankshaft so um, anyway so this is a 14 millimeter I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Get, get our drain bucket and uh, drain our oil and then we'll grab an oil filter all right there's no wrong answer here guys and a lot of opinions in the field um, I, I typically use a box end uh, of a wrench 
uh, just because it's easier. Uh, unless I have a stripped uh, drain plug, in which I'll definitely want to use a six point on a socket and ratchet. Uh, but a, but a, good, a good drain plug, as long as you're careful, you can get it out okay with a wrench. You just want to be sure not to, uh, not to pull this crooked and strip that drain plug. Now with a, with a steel drain pan, uh, you got a little bit of a uh, little bit of room for when we put this back together a little bit of room for over tightening you never want to over tighten but you don't have to be as careful with a steel pan um, but I'll get back to that now I've got this almost out typically it starts to drip a little bit at this point um, but right now I'm just going to keep spinning it, but I'm pushing it toward the drain pan so I don't drip on myself. Once I feel those threads fully out, pull, pull it straight out. Only got a couple drips on my finger. All right. Always have a rag handy right here with you. Which mine was only a hand, handful away here because you will get oil on your fingers. Obviously, you gotta wipe down the drain plug. Um, you also wanna check the gasket. Um, these drain plugs, almost all drain plugs have some sort of gasket, fiber, plastic, metal. Um, there's crush rings on some of them that are only good for one use. Um, but double check the, the quality of the gasket, not just the quality, but the condition of it. Um, if it's cracked, if it's broken, um, if it looks all beat up, replace the drain plug and or the, um, well, the drain plug washer and or the whole drain plug and washer assembly. So I'm gonna let this drain out to the point where I just get a small drip. The other thing that you wanna do is, you can see how almost all drain plugs are manufactured to the point where they come out at a diagonal um, now if they're coming out of diagonal the oil when it when it's under pressure and it's got five quarts in there it's gonna come straight out okay but as it starts to reduce pressure in the oil pan and that their capacity goes down and you only got a quart half quart in there it starts to slowly go this way okay so that's typically why we use like a transmission uh, pan catch like this um, you know because you could sit this up now I could walk away and I wouldn't have to worry about uh, I walk away and now the oil that used to be squirting here is now squirting here and it's all over the floor and you made a big mess so just be aware of that you know uh, several seconds you know 10 20 seconds after you take the drain plug out uh, that oil is going to start to move and it's going to hit your pan in a different place so just move your uh, your drain bucket accordingly. All right, so I'm gonna let that uh, that drain out a little bit. Our oil filter on this vehicle is uh, right up here, uh, right next to the pan. It actually they they were they were kind of smart. I'll give the engineers credit on this car. Um, Toyota's not too too bad for this. Um, they actually put the oil filter right next to the oil pan and very accessible. You don't have to remove anything to get to it. So. As I uh, grab this oil filter, typically you should be able to, um, now if I didn't have a bad wrist, I might be able to, but typically you should be able to take a drain, uh, sorry, an oil filter off by hand. Um, this one is, I am able to take it off by hand, and it's probably because I did the right thing when I put it on the first time. All right, so these are so close together, I can drain them both at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start loosening this one up. Now it's mounted upside down, so you can see what happens when I start to loosen it up, oil starts coming out of it because it's mounted this way. So I just let a little bit of that come out. I'm definitely gonna get my hands dirty, so suggest using a uh, set of gloves for this and a rag. So just keep unscrewing it, and when you pull it out, just pull it out straight down. All right, so you don't get oil all over yourself. Should also let these oil filters drain. 
uh, typically for 24 hours before throwing them in the in the garbage. You don't want these things uh, draining out oil into the garbage or into the landfill once it gets there. Uh, there's also oil filter recycling programs um, that, a lot, that most shops um, you know take advantage of. Um, we don't have that here unfortunately, but um, we do make sure that all the oil is drained out of it and, uh, and take care of all our used oil and recycle that. So this is now down to a slow drip on my drain plug side. So I'm gonna wipe that dry, make sure the threads are good, my drain plug gasket is good. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in. You should get Unless you have a damaged thread on the pan or the drain plug, you should be able to screw in that drain plug by hand all the way to the point where it makes contact with the pan and stops leaking. If you don't, then you probably got an issue with the drain plug or the drain uh, pan gasket, um, or the, I'm sorry, the threads in the, uh, in the oil pan. So, we don't want that. Uh, this one feels nice. I was able to uh, tighten it all the way and I'll give it a snug with a wrench and grab our oil filter.